Okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so uh, we have seen so far basic concepts in parameterized complexity. Uh, in this talk, I will present some advanced measures and techniques. So we are going to discuss the following uh, topics. The first topic is above guarantee parameterization, uh, which is uh, a refinement of the standard parameterization, as uh, mentioned yesterday briefly in uh, Daniel's introductory talk. The next topic is greedy localization, which enhances algorithms that are based on branching. And finally, we are going to see how we can use results for, from Metroid theory in the design of parameterized algorithms. Okay, so let's start with an example. In the MaxCut problem, we are given a graph and we seek a subset S of vertices such that the number of edges crossing from S to S complement is maximized. So if we choose this vertex, then we have two edges in the cut. If the set S consists of larger number of vertices, then all of the black edges are in the cut. So using the probabilistic method, Erdos showed that any graph which has m edges uh, has, contains uh, a cut of size m over 2. And in fact, such a cut can be obtained by using a simple uh, linear time greedy algorithm. So here is a standard parametrization for masks cut. We are given an undirected graph G and a positive integer K, which is the parameter. And the question is, does G have a cut of size at least K? And uh, max, cut, max cut has uh, um, 1.2418 to the K FPT algorithm. I hope this is the best. Uh, but we have seen a guarantee cut size of size M over 2. And now, we have that if k is at most m over 2, then the answer is always yes. And for large val values of k, the algorithm may become inefficient. So this calls for refining the question and asking a slightly different question. How much larger than the guaranteed value is the maximum cut size? And this leads to, def to the definition of above current guarantee max cut. So we are given an undirected graph, G, which has m edges and a positive integer k. And now we ask, does G have a cut of size at least k plus m over 2? And we're going to assume without loss of generality that G has no isolated vertices and no self loop because uh, none of them can contribute to the size of the cut in the graph. And now we're going to use a tighter guarantee due to er Edwards and Erdos, uh, which uh, asserts that uh, if we have in a gra connected graph n vertices and m edges with no self loops, that in fact we have... Uh, we have a cut size of m over 2 plus n minus 1 over 4. And in fact, if we have C connected components in the graph, then we have uh, a cut size of m over 2 plus n minus C over 4. This easily follows from the fact that we just look at each connected component separately with n i vertices and we just sum up the lower bound for each uh, uh, component. Okay, so here is a simple algorithm for above guarantee um, max cut. We start by finding the connected components of the graph G1 to GC. And then we check if the parameter K is at most N minus C over 4, then we output yes and stop. As we continue and we... Uh, find in each of the connect connected component a max si a cut of max size SI. Now we just sum the sizes of the max cut and we check whether the, uh, overall, the overall cut size is at least M over 2 by K, then we output yes, else we output no. And I will leave it as an exercise to verify that this, the correctness of this algorithm, which is so simple. 
And here is an example. K is equal to 3. Now we have three connected components. Uh, and we see that uh, k is larger than n minus c over 4, so we need to proceed to the second uh, step of the algorithm. We find max cut in each of the connected components. And now we see that the sum of the sizes of the cut is 11, which is, and while uh, m over 2 plus k is equal to 10. So this implies that this is a yes instance. Okay, so for the running time of the algorithm, we first have the, uh, the running time of for uh, finding the connected components in the, uh, in the graph G, and then we have to find the max cut in each connected component. And here we note that if we reach step two, then we have that N minus C is upper bounded by 4K. It means that the, si the number of vertices in each connected component, which is at most n minus c minus 1, is upper bounded by 4k. So even if we use just brute force, we have an FPT time algorithm. And furthermore, if, uh, for this algorithm, if k is O of log m uh, n, then the running time is polynomial. Okay, so Let's uh, return to our favorite problem uh, and look at the above guarantee vertex cover. So uh, we have seen the, the uh, maximum um, matching size is a lower bound for the minimum vertex cover. And let's denote this uh, size by uh, mu of g. And now in above guarantee vertex cover, we are given an undirected graph and a pos positive integers k and mu of g, and we are and the parameter now is k minus mu of g. And now we ask, does g have a vertex cover of size at most k? And now it is important to note that if we design an FPT algorithm, it has to be uh, the uh, parameter is now k minus the maximum matching size. Okay, so there is uh, an O star of uh, 4 to the k minus mu of g algorithm, which follows from a, a, a reduction to node multi-weight cut. This is not the best. In fact, we can uh, improve by uh, considering the linear programming formulation for vertex cover. So uh, in the uh, integer linear program for vertex cover, now I'm going to formulate it if, as an instance rather than a program. Uh, we are giving a, a graph G and a positive integer K. A feasible solution is an assignment of X uh, V to any uh, vertex V in the graph. And the constraint is that for any two uh, vertices, U and V such that, uh, that are connected by an edge, we need to guarantee that xu plus xv is at least one. Okay? And now we want to minimize the total sum of the xu values for all feasible solution x. Okay? In the linear programming relaxation, rather than taking, uh, taking uh, uh, x uh, of v to be in 0, 0 or 1, we just uh, allow x of v to be any uh, positive value. And now let uh, Vc star of the graph G be the minimum value for the LP. So now we define vertex cover above LP. The instance is now the graph G with positive integer K and the optimal solution for the linear programming formulation for vertex cover. The parameter is K minus this value. And now we ask whether G has a vertex cover of size at most K. Again, we require that the uh, running time of the algorithm depends on this value rather than just K. Okay, so vertex cover above LP can be solved in this time. And this is a paper, Saket, you know how to say the name, your paper. Uh, <laughs> Nan Swami uh, Al uh, Sakit is one of the authors, um, and and one important thing to note is that by weak duality of linear programs, 
we have that the optimum solution for the LP is lower bounded by the maximum matching size. S and therefore, K minus the, the optimum uh, linear program value is upper bounded by K minus the maximum uh, matching size. And now this implies that any algorithm for vertex cover above LP is also an algorithm for above guarantee vertex cover. Okay, so uh, above guarantee vertex cover uh, has been the center of many developments in parametrized algorithms. And the reason is that, that uh, faster algorithms for this problem uh, yield uh, faster algorithms for a host of other problems. Uh, we are not going to go over all of them, but uh, we are going to uh, focus on one problem just to show how it relates to above guarantee vertex cover, the odd cycle transversal. So um, in this problem, we are giving an undirected graph, a positive integer k, and the question is, does g have an odd cycle transversal of size at most k? In other words, we, we want to omit at most k vertices from the graph, such that the remaining graph is bipartite. Okay. So now we are going to show that uh, odd transversal can be uh, odd cycle transversal can be solved in time O star of four to the k. We've seen we've seen earlier this uh, running time for above guarantee vertex cover. As we said, not the best, but good for this example. Okay, so now uh, we are going to uh, gi given the input graph G, we are going to construct a graph G tilde. So First, we take two copies of G, G1 and G2, consisting of the same sets of vertices and edges, which is called the vertices in G1 and the edges V1 and E1, and the uh, vertices and edges in G2 to be V2 and E2. And, and the vertices in G tilde is, uh, are um, V1 union V2. The edges of, e, of G tilde uh, are the set of edges of, of G, uh, G1 and G2, and we add to that an edge between the two copies of each vertex. Okay, so each vertex U has a copy U1 in G1, a copy U2 in G2, we just connect them by an edge. Okay, so now we have uh, a perfect magic in G tilde which has a size n and is the uh, number of uh, vertices in the original graph. Okay, so uh, this implies of course that the maximum matching uh, size in uh, g tilde is equal to n. Now we are going to use the following lemma without proof due to lack of time. Uh, so it can be shown that g has an odd transver cycle transversal of size at most k if and only if g tilde has a vertex cover of size at most k plus n. So now we are going to do the following. We are going to solve above guarantee vertex cover on g tilde with parameter which is in fact equal to k because we are taking k plus n minus the maximum matching size. And this is, uh, so this, uh, the maximum matching size is equal to n, so we are taking the parameter k. This, is, this can be done in time O star of 4 to the k. If yes, we can use the lemma to obtain an odd cycle transversal of size at most k in G. Otherwise, by the lemma, we know that G has no odd cycle transversal of size at most k. Okay, so this was just one example to uh, a problem that can benefit from faster algorithm for uh, above guarantee vertex cover. Okay, if no questions, we're going to move to our second topic, greedy localization. So again, we're going to look at an example. 
Uh, in triangle packing, we are given a graph G, and we seek a maximum size set of vertex disjoint triangles. In this graph, the size of this set is 4. Okay. How do we parameterize in, in a standard way uh, triangle packing? Uh, we are given an undirected graph G and a positive integer K, and we ask, does G have K disjoint copying of K3 or K disjoint, uh, uh, disjoint uh, triangles uh, where uh, they are disjoint in vertices? And it is like a common approach is to use branching to recursively search for a solution for the problem. Now the question is, can we enhance the branching? Can we just improve the running time? And the answer is yes. We can start off with a greedy step. So let's just zoom on this new first step that we are going to add to an uh, originally uh, branching-based algorithm. We start by finding, even greedily, uh, a maximal set A of vertex disjoint triangles in G. And the main observation is that if there exists a solution to the problem, call it Sol, uh, which contains at least K disjoint triangles, then any triangle in this solution has to intersect some triangle in A. Otherwise, A is not maximal. So now, we just need to guess the intersection of A with this solution, assuming it exists. Okay, so here is now the algorithm. So, step one, as we said, Find a maximal uh, set A of vertex disjoint triangles in the graph. If A has at least K triangles, we are done. This is what we are looking for. Okay? Else, we are going to look at the subgraph that is induced by the triangles in A. And now, we, uh, we look at the uh, number of vertices in this subgraph. If the number of vertices is smaller than k, there, there is no way that we can complete any uh, the, the vertices in this graph or any selection of vertices in this uh, induced uh, subgraph to k disjoint triangles in a solution. So obviously, we can output the answer no. Right? Okay. So. Now, assume that the number, so we have number of, of triangles in the, this greedy solution that we have found, A. The number of triangles is smaller than K. However, the total number of vertices in this solution is at least K. Now, we are going to guess a subset S of, gay ver of K vertices in uh, this uh, set of vertices of A, G of A. And now, each vertex uh, in VI in S becomes a partial triangle that we call OI in a solution that we are now going to find. So the final step is to guess the extension of all partial triangles to full ones. So here is an outline of this algorithm. Suppose that we are looking for for uh, k uh, disjoint triangles where k is equal to 4. We start with a greedy step, which finds three such uh, this, uh, vert uh, triangles disjoint in vertices. So the total number of vertices is uh, larger than 4, so now we are going to guess four vertices um, in uh, these triangles. And now we are going to guess how to complete uh, each of these uh, vertices that is now a partial triangle to uh, a triangle in a solution for the problem. And we output this as a solution. 
Okay, so what is the running time? So the, the really the heavier part or what we need to uh, uh, argue here uh, is that we have FPT time for uh, the, st the steps that start with guessing uh, the, uh, the set S of vertices of the partial triangles. So uh, guessing S requires 2 to the uh, O of K steps since we know that the total number of vertices in A is bound upper bounded by 3 times K minus 1. Now, guessing the vertices that complete the partial triangle, uh, triangles requires k to the o of k steps. So let's just maybe just uh, elaborate a bit about this running time. So suppose that we are given a correct guess of k vertices in S, these partial triangles in the solution. So now, if we get to a situation where at some triangle OI cannot be completed, we need to guess a vertex among those that were added to the previous partial triangles O1 to OI minus 1 and add this vertex to OI. But there are all, only O of K such vertices. And one of them will be uh, the correct one. Why is only on O of K? Because each of them is a partial triangle, it has already one vertex and we need to add only two vertices. And we got stuck when we tried to extend OI. I, have, I haven't shown the complete algorithm which, uh, which uses the guessing and the extension. But if at some point we try to extend OI and we cannot extend it, obviously one of the uh, vertices that we added previously to a, a partial triangle among among O1 uh, to OI minus 1 is one that should be added to OI. But the overall number of such vertices is at most 2 times K. Right? Because we just need to complete triangles. Okay? So, so now uh, we need to guess such a vertex to be added to partial triangles at most 3k times since the total number of vertices in the solution is 3k and in each, once we guess for, uh, we make a correct guess for OI, we are going to make progress. So in each such uh, uh, correct guess for uh, some partial triangle, we make progress by one vertex and this is uh, the overall, so the overall Running time is O of K to the uh, O of K, and which is uh, O star of 2 to the O uh, K log K. Okay, and I have described this in terms of the, the no, what we call the non-deterministic way by guessing, and we can equivalently describe it by looking at the branching tree and the uh, size of the branches and the height of the tree. But this is equivalent. Okay, so now let's look at the general greedy localization technique. Yes. Uh, can you, sorry, I, I completely uh, understood why you can guess some uh, vertices of uh, your triangle, uh, of uh, your pre uh, maximal uh, backing. Sorry. But I do not get how you can ensure that you can extend them, uh, how you compute this extension. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I haven't shown the, com the uh, the way we do the extension, but generally we just try to extend uh, each of these partial, uh, partial, partial triangle, just avoiding uh, the vertices that have already been chosen by other partial triangles. But if this one of these triangles, OI, cannot be extended, it, or, then it means that we have chosen, uh, made uh, um, uh, a bad selection of vertex in the previous triangles and then we have to take this collection of vertices and guess one of them and see if adding this vertex to OI can uh, help us uh, complete this uh, uh, triangle. Okay, so something that needs to be, uh, be thought about but we can discuss it uh, in further detail later. Okay, so what is the general technique and maybe I'll uh, go I'll mention again the running time when we, um, when we summarize the general technique. Okay, so now uh, we are given a problem pi. 
Uh, and it satisfies the, the following two properties. The first property is that pi can be formulated as a problem of finding k pairwise disjoint objects in an input instance g, uh, whereas an object is a subset of elements in the ground set v of g whose size depends only on k. The second property is that for any uh, subset r, subsets r, uh, in x in v, we can decide in fpt time if there exists a subset s in v minus x such that r union with s is an object. Let me just rephrase it. So now we would like uh, s to be an extension of a partial object r to a full object r union with s avoiding the subset of uh, elements x. Okay, just recall what we were doing for the uh, triangle packing problem. We're trying to extend a partial triangle, avoiding vertices that were already selected by other triangles, because we want the triangles to be disjoint in vertices. Okay, so uh, we're going to use the notation that um, a set of partial object is B1 to BK, and VB is the collection of ground element contained in B. So what, this is the meta algorithm. We are given an instance G with ground set V and an integer K, and we output yes if G uh, has K non-overlapping objects, otherwise we output no. So the algorithm uh, computes an inclusion maximal non-overlapping set of objects A. If A con contains at least uh, K uh, objects, then we return yes and stop. Otherwise, we check the number of uh, ground elements in A, and if it's smaller than K, we output no. If it's at least of size, if V of A is at least of size K, then we guess uh, a, su a subset of ground, uh, the ground set elements V1 to VK, and OI is now a partial object that consists of a single element. Vi. Now we are going to use branching on the subset on this set of partial objects O1 to OK. We are not going to uh, look into the details of the branching procedure, and uh, the only um, maybe just only say that the subroutine branching accepts as input a set of k objects O, uh, which is equal to O1 to OK, and returns yes if O can be extended to a set of full objects, else returns no. Okay, and now we are going to show that if a parameterized problem pi satisfies properties 1 and 2, then greedy localization is an FPT algorithm for the problem pi. So for correctness, the key observation that we have stated earlier for the uh, triangle packing problem is that if there exists a solution for pi, sol, that has at least k uh, objects, then any objects in this sol i in this solution intersects some object aj in a. And this is due to the maximality of a. So now we are going to guess k ground elements in va, each belong to a distinct object in the solution that we are looking for. And the subroutine branching will find uh, for each element, uh, a one element partial object OJ, an extension to an element sol i in the solution. Okay, uh, so just for the running time, so we have to guess k elements. This requires uh, uh, we just choose k out of the total number of ground elements in A which is a function of k. Now, guessing the extension of each element to an object can be done in FPT time, and this is by the second property, and since object sizes are bounded by a function of k. So overall, we have an FPT time algorithm. Okay. So the technique was first used by Chenal uh, and Gia and Al in 2004, then the term uh, greedy localization was turned by the NAL uh, in the same year. Uh, there, uh, 
this, there is a list of uh, problems that, uh, for which uh, greedy lo localization was applied to solve. Um, I think we're going to skip the, um, the descriptions of the problems um, and just move to uh, our third topic. Any questions? Okay, so metrate theory unifies and generalizes some common phenomena in um, in um, metroids and um, in, in graph algorithms and and uh, linear algebra. And we are going to we we'll start with some uh, with a short introduction on metroids, and then we'll see how results from metroid theory can be used to solve uh, a problem in graph theory. So, suppose that we have a finite universe, U. A metroid M is a pair, U, F, which satisfies the following. F is a collection of subsets of U, and we call these subsets independent sets. The second property, hereditary, is that if B is an independent set and A is contained in B, then A is also an independent set. And the final property, called the exchange property, if A is an independent set and B is an independent set, and A has cardinality smaller than B, then there exists an element X which is in B but not in A, such that A union X is an independent set. Small example. Suppose that U is, consists of the numbers 1, 2, 3. Now I define the set of subsets 1, 2, 2, 3, 1, 2, and 3, and the empty set. Okay? So I claim that taking uh, the metric taking a u comma f, uh, we uh, get a metroid. Okay, so I will leave it to you to verify that m is a metroid. So a basis for a metroid is a maximum size independent set. And we note that by the exchange property, all bases of a metroid u comma f have the same size. And this is called the rank of the metroid. Okay, so let's move to weighted metroids. So a metroid is weighted if there is some weight function on the elements of the universe, such that each element has some real positive weight. And for a subset S of elements in the universe, the weight of the subset is just the sum of the weights of the element in the subset. And now, Consider the, a, a classic problem in metroid the theory, the metroid optimization problem. So we need to find a basis S of minimum total weight. So here is a greedy algorithm which uh, solves this problem. We start by the empty S is the empty set. Now we sort the elements in the universe in non-decreasing order by weights, so that the weight of the first element is upper bounded by the weight of the second element, which is then upper bounded by other elements until we get to the last element, w, the uh, un. Now, we are going to proceed in n iterations. In iteration i, we just check if we can add element ui in this sorted order, if we can add it to s such that we have an independent set, then s is now s union with ui. This is the algorithm, and we output s. Okay, so now let's see a classic problem on graphs. We are given a connected graph, and with with weights, positive weights on the edges, and we need to find a minimum spanning tree on the graph. 
And let's recall Kruskal's algorithm. What does the algorithm, how it proceeds? We start with an empty tree. Now we sort the edges in the graph in non-decreasing order by the weights, so that the weights of the, the first edges is upper bounded by the weight of the second edge, and so on un until we get to the mth edge. Now we proceed in m iterations. If we can add e, the edge ei to the tree that we are building, such that we do not get a cycle, then we add ei to the tree. Okay? Seemingly different than what we have discussed earlier. Here is an example of Kruskal's algorithm. Okay, so we move to graph theory. How now we are going to define a universe that is the set of the edges in the graph. The independent sets are all the subsets of edges E prime such that V E prime is a forest. Now, it can be shown that if we look at the universe that we defined U comma F, the set of the collection of independent set, then this is a graphic metroid. So in fact, Kruskal's algorithm is an application of the algorithm we've seen in earlier. Metroid greedy on this Metroid. Okay, so this was just one example on the connection between Metroids and problems on graphs. Now, uh, we are going to use in, uh, later in the discussion the Metroid parity problem. So we are given a Metroid M, which is U comma F, and we have um, uh, collection of pairs on, of elements, P, of the universe. And we are given a positive integer K, and now the question is, is there a subset S of these pairs, P, of at least K disjoint pairs whose union is an independent set in the Metroid? And it it is known that Metroid parity admits a polynomial time algorithm. And we won't give the details here. Okay, so our problem now is feedback vertex set in subcubic graphs. So the problem is uh, for a given graph G equals to VE uh, with maximum degree 3, uh, we seek a subset uh, S of vertices um, of, at most, uh, of size at most k, such that omitting uh, S from G leaves the graph acyclic. So before we solve this problem, let's consider a version of the problem that we call special disjoint feedback vertex set. So the, an instance of this problem is a graph with a subset of vertices W such that if we uh, omit uh, the, the, sub, the induced subgraph, the, the, the subgraph induced by W, then the remaining uh, vertices are, uh, are form an independent set. And each vertex in V minus W has a degree at most 3. We also have a positive integer k. And the question is, is there a subset S in V minus W of at most K vertices such that omitting uh, this um, set from the graph leaves it acyclic. So here is an example of an instance for this variant of feedback vertex set. So we have two subsets of vertices, W and V minus W. If we omit W from this graph, uh, the, the subgraph induced by W, then we have an independent set. And also, each vertex in V minus W has a degree at most three. Okay? So most of our effort will be uh, to solve special disjoint FVS, and later we'll see how we can easily get uh, an algorithm for uh, our uh, problem of uh, uh, feedback vertex set in subcubic graph using this variant. Okay, so we are going to show that 
special disjoint feedback vertex set has a polynomial time algorithm. Okay, so um, we are given an input graph for special disjoint feedback vertex set. We are going to use exha exhaustively uh, a set of reduction rules to obtain an instant that is a bipartite graph, G, which has two sets of vertices, V minus W and W, with edges connecting these two sets. And every vertex in V minus W has degree exactly three. Um, I won't get into the details of the reduction rules because uh, we, are going, we, we want to focus on another part of, this, uh, of, of the proof, but this can be done um, by a set of rules. And this is a graph that we uh, have after uh, applying these rules. So now we have a bipartite graph. Each Vertex in V minus W has degree exactly three. Now we are going to use a reduction to metroid parity. So I'm going to look at the set of vertices W and I'm going to define a clique H uh, over this vertex set. Yes. Oh, this, uh, there is. But you are only allowed to choose the subset S out of uh, V minus W. So you're not allowed to cut on the right side, so you cannot uh, cut the cycle on the right. Yeah, yeah okay, so <laughs> we need to fix the example. I agree, I agree, okay. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so... Okay, so now we have this bipartite graph. We are going to define a reduction to metroid, to metroid parity in order to solve the special disjoint field feedback vertex set. Have you already defined metroid yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I will define it in a, in a moment when I, uh, I'll just define the instance of metroid parity and this will remind as all uh, the definition of the problem. Okay, so now we look at the set of vertices W and we are going to define a clique over this set of vertices and we are going to define a graphic metroid over this uh, subgraph H. And I'm just going to remind what is a graphic metroid. We are going, uh, the uh, universe is the set of the edges in this clique H, and the set of the collection of, of independent sets is the, all, the col all the subset E prime of the edges in the clique such that the subgraph induced by W and E prime is a C clique. Okay, now we are going to define a metro E a parity instance. So we uh, define uh, uh, it will be a multi-set uh, of uh, pairs of uh, edges in the click H that we define, and this contains a pair of edges in, in the following. Uh, in the reduction will uh, be done in the following way. We look at a vertex U that belongs to V minus W. And we, we know that each vertex in V minus W has exactly three neighbors now, okay? Suppose the neighbors are, are X, Y, and Z. So now we add the pair X, Y, Y, Z to the collection of pairs P. Remember that in Metroid parity, we have collection of pairs of elements of a universe that is the, the, the ground set for the Metroid. Okay, so now for each vertex in V minus W, uh, having these neighbors, we add a pair to P. Now suppose that V, the number of uh, vertices in, the, in our graph is equal to N, and C is the parameter for the special disjoint feedback vertex set input, and we set our parameter for metroid parity instance to be K minus uh, W minus T. Now, we are going to recall the definition of uh, metroid parity. Okay, to show the validity of this reduction, we want to show that 
G has a feedback vertex set, S in V minus W, of size at most T, if and only if there is a subset Z of these pairs that we defined, of which uh, has size at least K, such that the union of these pairs is independent in our metroid, MH. Okay, so now we are going to focus on showing that this reduction is valid and it, is, it suffices to solve the metroid parity problem in order to get uh, a solution for the, um, for the uh, vertex, uh, feedback vertex set. Okay, so in order to uh, show the validity of this reduction, uh, we are going to define a bijection between subsets of V minus W and subsets of P, the pairs of edges uh, in, this, in the clique. So for a set, uh, given a set of uh, vertices X in V minus W, now we define Z of X to be uh, the set of pairs such that uh, uh, for each, we, we have defined for each vertex uh, in V minus W, we have defined, since it has three neighbors, we have defined a set of pairs, or, or pa sorry, a pair uh, of elements, okay? So now we just look for a subset X of V minus W, the collection of pairs that we defined for the vertices in X, okay? So now the claim is that given such a subset X of V minus W, the graph induced by, G, by W union with X is acyclic if and only if the uh, set of pairs corresponding to X in, uh, is independent in the metroid and the pairs in ZX are disjoint. Okay, so now we're going to prove the claim, only partially, but just to get the flavor of how we show such a statement. So let's start with the first direction. Uh, we are going to show that if uh, X uh, is acyclic, then this, uh, this uh, is a statement is satisfied. So now assume by way of contradiction that, that uh, there are two pairs in Zx that contain the same edge. So, meaning that this condition is not satisfied. We want to show that there is a cycle here. Okay? So, if Zx contains the same edge Yz, it means that there are two vertices in W, Y and Z, which are the neighbors of two different vertices in our uh, set X. Okay, so just look at this, suppose we call these two vertices U and V. U has the neighbors Y and Z, and V has the neighbors Y and Z. So now we got a cycle in the graph induced by uh, W union X. If we look at the, the cycle U, Y, V, Z. Okay, so this is uh, the first part. Now, we continue with the first direction. Now, suppose that the pairs in Zx are disjoint, but the union of uh, the pairs that correspond to uh, this uh, subset X uh, is not independent in the metroid. And again, we want to show that there is a cycle in the graph induced by, uh, by the union of W and X. Okay? So, now, if this if this collection of pairs is not independent in the metroid, the metroid is uh, all independence and in the metroid are all subset of edges in uh, the clique that we, that we defined over W that uh, induce an acyclic graph. This means that now we have a cycle by the union of these pairs. Okay, so now we are going to look at this cycle. The cycle is uh, in the clique that we uh, previously defined uh, over the vertices in W. So now, for each, uh, we have a cycle in H, and the cycle is C1 to CL. And now, for each I between 0 and L, let UI be the vertex in X 
such that the pair corresponding to ui contains the edge ci ci plus one and and we know that the pairs in zx are disjoint so ui is defined is uniquely defined okay and it is adjacent to both ci and ci plus one because recall that the pair ci ci plus one corresponds to the neighbors of the of a, a vertex so now the vertex u the vertex ul is adjacent to cl and c1 okay so now we need to note that the vertices u1 to ul are not necessarily distinct so there may be some vertices that a vertex that repeats all but what is important to note is that they cannot be all equal because c is a simple cycle on at least three edges but any ui corresponds to two edges because it has only three neighbors okay and therefore there exists some i such that ui is different than ui plus one okay a picture so now suppose that we look at a cycle uh, of size six we have okay so this is uh, where we defined uh, the click h over the uh, vertices in w this is now a subset of vertices in v minus w okay so the, de the dashed ed uh, edges are now the cycle that we have in h okay so now suppose that i is equal to three we said that i is equal to three and ui is different than ui plus one okay so now look at u3 and u4 so there is a simple cycle there is a simple path from u4 to u3 because u3 has the neighbors c3 and c4 and u4 has the neighbors c4 and c5 this is how we define them okay so now there is a simple path between uh, this is the first simple path between them however there is another simple path that is disjoint for this path between u4 and u3 and this is the green path okay so we have two uh, vertex is joint pass between v between u4 and u3 and this implies that now we have a cycle in the graph induced by the union of x and w okay so uh, for the second direction we are not going to repeat it i hope some there is we, we did we did uh, get some of the flavor of how we show this such a, a, a reduction uh, from uh, the a metroid problem to uh, a graph problem just uh, to mention that if uh, in the other direction uh, suppose that uh, the graph induced by uh, w union with x contains a cycle So now, so in the other direction, suppose that the graph induced by uh, uh, U union with X contains a cycle C, and now we look at the set of uh, pairs that corresponds to uh, the uh, vertices in this uh, cycle, and and we can show uh, also this in, in this case that either uh, the uh, the uh, pairs are either not disjoint or uh, the graph uh, subgraph induced by uh, uh, these pairs contains a cycle in H the click that we defined over W okay so we were looking at the, the claim that we were looking at just uh, we, we just uh, forgot about uh, look for uh, finding a uh, feedback vertex set right uh, we just said something about a subset of vertices uh, uh, in uh, v minus w and we had a claim about uh, cycles uh, cycle in uh, the graph induced by this subset and and about the uh, metroid in the, that we defined over w so now in order to 
to go back to our feedback vertex set version, we need to uh, just recall that uh, if we are going, we are now looking for a feedback vertex set in V minus W, then uh, there is such a subset S of V minus W of size at most T, uh, then X is of size at least N minus W minus T, which is equal uh, to K, such that the graph induced by W union with X is acyclic and vice versa. So by uh, showing this claim, this implies that now we can use a polynomial time algorithm for metric parity to solve special disjoint feedback vertex set. Okay. So the last thing to do is just recall that we were looking at feedback vertex set uh, on subcubic graphs. Okay, so now it is easy. Uh, we want to show that the problem admits a polynomial time algorithm. So we are given an instance of the problem. And what we do is simple transform the uh, instance into a graph G prime such that in the middle of each edge we add a vertex of um, degree 2. Okay, so now we're going to call the set of uh, this blue, navy blue edge uh, vertices, we're going to call it W. So now it is easy to verify that a subset S in V of G is feedback vertex set of G if and only if S is a feedback vertex set in G prime. Okay, now we can run the polynomial time algorithm on special disjoint feedback vertex set on where the instance is G prime with the set special set of vertices W. Okay, so uh, uh, here is uh, here's some uh, examples to some problems uh, for which uh, uh, Metroids uh, were used so far to obtain FPT algorithms, uh, and uh, there are many more. They are not on this on this slide. Any questions? Okay, thank you.